Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report for Wednesday, the 16th of May. And, of course, our special guest, Harley Schlanger from the Roosh Foundation, is pounding, as they say, shelling. Uh, Barney Frank, of course, the financial uh, wizard of darkness uh, in the uh, U.S. government. And on top of uh, Obama, who refuses to put in Glass-Steagall. And we have also members of the Republican Party, including Ron Paul, who refused to put Mercy Captors bill on the agenda. Again, it's obvious he's not going to become the next candidate for GOP president. So why doesn't he step forward and back Glass-Steagall? The first step in actually truncating and cutting off the head of the dragon, which is the Federal Reserve System that is allowing this monstrosity to continue and the derivatives mess because by walling off the speculative market and the bankster criminals that are running the world to the ground and people's credit and money and value, pensions, house equity, and the national security of the world. It's just insane that we don't have any action in this part. So tell us all about it, Harley. Well, this is where you see Ron Paul's ideology get in the way of his otherwise good sense. He knows that the funny money system of the Federal Reserve is no good and should be shut down. But he also has a disagreement with the Constitution as to the role of Congress uh, establishing the currency, credit, and debt of the United States. And that's why he wants to go to a British-style gold uh, specie system. And this is where he diverts from the Constitution. Well, we know that the, the, the Minister of Finance for the German state, after World War I, came up with the most brilliant idea to use the standard of the German laborer's hour of labor, not a gold standard. And we had a revolution in Germany that caused the rise of the Reich after a devastation of Central Europe. What we need well, to do is not have a gold have, standard, and we need yeah. to have a credit system that allows people to actually build infrastructure, build jobs, get factories back working, have a whole young generation where almost 50 percent uh, in North America and more in Europe now are unemployed and have no future, even with a degree. Well, here's, here's the reason Ron Paul not doing that is dangerous, that if we don't get Glass-Steagall before the implosion, then there's no banking system left, and there's no money left. Look what's happening in Greece right now. Over a, 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 about, well, it's actually it was $900 million withdrawn in the last two days from the Greek banking system. Yeah, they're, already, they're already having a banking run. I think it was a billion dollars right off the bat the first day. And yeah. that means basically that bank run is going to cause a bank run there's five major banks in America that are holding European sovereign debt. That means the reason, the number one reason why Obama is preparing for quote possible bank holiday martial law, not because of an incoming asteroid they know from Space uh, Command or any other uh, in danger of war. No, no, it's a bank holiday, which is I like the uh, the way he musically says it. Uh, Gerald Salente, it's not going to be a Broadway hit. The bank holiday. It's going to be a mess, and people don't understand it's going to devastate the shelves, uh, clear people's ability to buy food or gas. It's well, going to let, destroy let through, the infrastructure. Let me go through by step by step how this works so people get a sense and also get, get into reality. Right. Because the, what the Greeks are doing, though, they, they're pretty clear that Greece is going to pull out of the euro because of the popular rebellion against the austerity policy. And by the way, their election is uh, June 17th. It's already been called by the senior justice, called by the Aziri party. So that justice is already labeled June 17th is D-Day, which is only a month away. Well, it, it's even quicker than that, because the reason they had to have, they just had elections a week and a half ago. But it's going but to be again two, on June 17th. Yeah. Now, the two parties that had 70-plus percent of the vote before the elections two weeks ago, only got 32% of the vote. They fell over 40% because they were the parties that signed the austerity agreement with the European Union. And so now you have a whole series of smaller parties that have more votes that, that refuse, led by the New Dawn Party, they refused to sign an agreement. And so they couldn't put together a new government. Now, as a result, you're having at, at the European Finance Minister's meeting two nights ago, you had a lot of discussion of what they're calling the Grexit, that is the Greece exit from the euro. And this was being discussed by people like Maria Fechter, the Finance Minister of Austria. It's being discussed 
by Schäuble, the finance minister of Germany, uh, Christine Lagarde, the head of the International Monetary Fund. In fact, she said, we have to make sure if it happens, it happens in an orderly fashion. Well, there's no way it can be orderly, because the reason people are taking their money out of the Greek banks is that if they leave it in there and the Greek government is pulls out of the euro, their currency will change to the drachma, but they'll be devalued, and so their life savings will be worth almost nothing, because the drachma cannot be competitive with the euro. However, this would be good for the Greek people, because within a very brief period of time, they would, able to, they would be able to do what you just said, go to a credit system to put people to work, start producing, and not have the austerity regime, and not have to measure themselves against the euro in the German economy. Now, the second point is, if Greece does this to save its banking system and its, and its nation, why should Italy, Spain, Portugal, and Ireland kill their people for the sake of, of staying in good stead with the euro. And so the whole euro system is closer now to, to disappearing than at any time since it was implemented over a decade ago. So this is what LaRouche had been saying, that there's no way you can protect a monetary system that's based on uh, financial speculation. Now, at the same time, Dr. Bill, we, we should just notice that the J.P. Morgan Chase loss of two billion is much bigger than that. That was two billion that was leveraged to probably a hundred billion, and no one knows how many banks were buying the credit default swaps and collateralized debt obligations that came out of that uh, well, they, special department. They probably recirculated yeah. several times, which means these debts are actually recirculated and rebought. So that's actually probably multiples of that is what you're talking about. So in other words, it's an exponential. It's not that's a right. it's not a factor, a multiple factor. It's an exponential. And what Jamie Dimon, the head of J.P. Morgan uh, Chase, said, the one thing he said that was true, is that well, we were rehedging a hedge. Now, a hedge is a bet, and they're rebetting a bet. Only because we don't have Glass Steagall, that means that ultimately backing it up is what depositors money savers money and that's why we have to say that if you're going to speculate you're going to get no help from the federal government in fact we're going to probably prosecute you for illegal speculation but we must have a banking system which is protected from this and that means the first thing glass steagall would do would be to do an audit and a reorganization, a bankruptcy reorganization of these too big to fail banks. Now, why doesn't Ron Paul support that? I don't know. But the American people are increasingly beginning to realize that LaRouche was right because we were almost alone in saying we have to have Glass Steagall restored. Oh, yeah. Almost uh, alone. Uh, uh, and you were uh, one uh, of the uh, first uh, people who responded. Right. And I also I have to make people understand this. The Von Mises. School of Economics, which is people like Lou Rockwell, uh, is insanity. It's the Austrian royalty of several hundred years ago trying to put a financial system in that's returning the, the uh, literally the countryside and the world to a system of the feudal lords in Europe. This is and not a good slavery. system. And it's debt, debt slavery. slavery. Yeah, and exactly. the Habsburg Empire, which is where out of Austria, von Mises and uh, von Hayek came, modeled their program on the British Empire of the mid-19th century, which was Lord Palmerston and Queen Victoria trying to destroy our United States by funding the Confederacy to break us apart. Well, here, turn- here's what we have to ask. We have to ask ourselves, what is an economy? The Hamiltonian credit system, as we move into the 21st century, here's the, 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 the you want to call the drivers that are going to change everything. The idea of limitless energy, which we will have soon. The idea now with Internet and iPads and everything, limitless information and education. The idea that we do not need to have, quote, production in the old typical sense in order to have an economy. And we don't have to have austerity fascism and a contracted world population to support a global elite that just want to have the earth as a park. Back in a moment.
Welcome back, and uh, let's go on to the next topic. I think it's one of the, one we were discussing on the break. It was the issue of, of Putin. This month, within the next two weeks, the 1,000-plus missiles on the missile defense system to knock out Russian missiles that are in their launch phase becomes activated in Eastern Europe. And every one of these countries that have done this have made themselves by public declaration from the Russians and the Russian generals and Putin himself, who's now crowned in his third term, who has decided not to go to the Chicago meeting, who moved the venue for the uh, meeting that was going to be held to June 17th. He will not be there at this latest meeting. He's going to send Medvedev. And uh, people don't understand that every one of these Eastern Bloc nations, Poland, the Ukraine, etc., they're making themselves nuclear targets for a first strike by Russia. This is the stupidest thing, thinking that how wise it is, because they want to cozy up to the Europeans thinking they need the money. Uh, you don't need to be nuclear annihilated, because if there's a, sh- a pushing war here, the very first thing that's going to happen is you and your cities that are surrounding these missile defense systems will become a fireball of hell. Well, they didn't pay attention when the initial proposal was made, because the initial proposal was made under Bush. And this is another thing that was very stupid that Bush and Cheney did, that Obama escalated. Yeah. And the idea was that we're going to put these anti-missile systems in Romania and Poland that will protect Europe from Iranian missiles. Uh-huh. Now, the Russians said, if you're really worried about non-existent missiles and non-existent nuclear weapons from Iran, then work with us to put in these systems in Azerbaijan and southern Russia, where you're much closer to the launch of them. And the United States said no. Then the Russians said, look, let's instead go with the strategic defense of the Earth, link the anti-missile defense system with the protection, the development of a, a tracking and protection system against asteroids and other possible dangers from space. Again, the U.S. said no. Finally, the Russians said, look, bring us into the discussion. And the U.S. said, oh, don't worry, this has nothing to do with you. But where these missiles are being placed are exactly what you just said, that they're placed in such a way that if the U.S. launched a first strike against Russia, these anti-missile systems would be able to take out a portion of a Russian retaliation. So the Russians are saying, why would you do this if you weren't intending to attack Russia? It's only a first, uh, in other words, those missiles are only there to allow America to make a first strike on Russia. That's right. And a lot of the Europeans know it, but they essentially went along with it initially because they were buying into the line that Putin is a great dictator and this is a return to Cold War and Soviet Union policy. But the Russians have been extremely, in fact, LaRouche has said Putin has shown a brilliance strategically because he went to the Europeans and he said, look, we're not going to buy into your bankrupt (coughs) system. But we're willing to help you rebuild your infrastructure. We're willing to buy a portion. For example, Yakunin, who is the head of the Russian railways and is very close to LaRouche, Yakunin said Russia would buy, uh, help, or rather help Greece rebuild their rail lines instead of privatizing them. So the Russians have made a series of very good initial economic offers. At the same time, they've offered the United States the Reagan the original Reagan policy of collaboration with the SDI, only this time instead of Strategic Defense Initiative, a Strategic Defense of Earth, SDE. And by, well, the, way, the, the, by the way, the Strategic Defense of Earth pro- project, I was actually one of the doctors for it in the mid-90s, does exist. And most of it is aimed toward nearest objects. But the problem is they haven't brought in a proper a full collaboration with Russia and China. Because the kinds of nearest objects that are going to come in, we're coming to the area of space as we cross the 2012 midpoint of the transition across the galactic plane that occurs every 62 million years, we're in grave trouble of a 30 times higher risk of a major asteroid impact. And, and the fact we found that we out from the last one that, that we didn't find out about it until it went between the Earth and the Moon. Yeah, 68,000 miles away, which is, we, yeah, we don't have, by the way, they only found about this too late. Uh, yeah. it, what they need to do is find it out far enough that they can actually put objects out there to push it out in space or develop collaborative technology the same way as they need collaborative technology to deal but as we're shutting last down night. Our, Obama is shutting down our satellite system. So the Russians, and this is actually yeah. the most important point here, the yeah. Russians said, if you wish to collaborate, we're willing to do so. If not, we see this deployment in Romania and Poland as a hostile act, and the Russians called an emergency conference in Moscow two weeks ago, 
And General Makarov, who's the chief of staff of the Russian military, said, if we get no cooperation or collaboration, we may strike those sites. And then the Russian defense minister last week said, we're putting the Iskander missile, which is one of these mobile missiles, on trucks in preparation for the opening of these uh, anti-missile systems. We may have to strike you. Now, May 20th is the NATO summit in Chicago. By the way, it looks like they're practically evacuating Chicago because they're trying to clear the place from demonstrators. But in any case... If they agree, if NATO agrees on May 20th to give the U.S. to go ahead to activate the Aegis missile, which is the first round of the defense, that may be a signal for a Russian strike. Now, Putin then, a couple days ago, said he's not coming to the G8 summit in Camp David. And this completely shocked the White House. They said, oh, we thought that might happen. But actually, they didn't think it would at all. And meanwhile, Putin is going to be going to uh, China. He's going to be going to Germany. He's going to go to a couple of other places. And the, I think China is the first one. And the Russians and the Chinese are saying to the Europeans, look, this American policy is crazy, which is true. And the Europeans, who are tied to the United States in this desperate attempt to bail out the biggest banks in the world... Well, that's why they call them all these... So 22 divisions of the Israeli, uh, I mean battalions, 22 battalions of the Israeli military yeah. on the Syrian and the Egyptian border. That's why they've actually called forward and now built what's called a war government in Israel in the last week. That's why they're getting ready. Israel is literally getting ready for a thermonuclear attack on the Bashir reactor that the international agencies such as uh, the, the uh, Society of uh, Scientists uh, for Social Responsibility and Medical Doctors that have been against nuclear weapons for decades, and I've been a member for years, have stated very clearly that an attack on the Bashir reactor will immediately kill over 30 million people and create a radiation cloud that will be equal or greater than Fukushima. Well, and this is where you see the fact that Obama right now is an extremely desperate man. And, you know, a lot of people who are, are really, who don't like Obama, but they say you can't beat him, uh, you can't win. Uh, you know, people who have given it's, up it's don't ridiculous. realize that what Putin did was a, a strategic blow to Obama. Now Obama's standing there. Remember, he told us that the Dodd-Frank bill and the re- so-called regulatory reforms that he implemented would stop foreclosures and prevent any future 2007-2008 type collapses. Now what we just saw with J.P. Morgan Chase is that, in fact, the leveraging is bigger, the exposure is bigger, and there's no protection. Exactly. And there's recirculating debt that keeps going. We're talking about quadrillions of dollars, not trillions. We're talking about if this starts a run, which it did in Greece, of a couple billion dollars in just a few days, this could spread, this contagion could spread to Europe very quickly, and by mid-June we could have a financial collapse of Earth. Um, yesterday we had on the program, we had Chris Atkins on from uh, the uh, PrepareWise, which is now one of our sponsors for Nutramedical. So you go to Nutramedical or go under products, PrepareWise, and believe me, you better get your non-radioactive food because here's the scenario I see as a possible, not a prophetic, but a possible timeline. Uh, number one, at the, if we don't avert it, it's like a freight train heading toward a concrete wall. Uh, that's off the track and now veering directly toward the the uh, the and there's no brakes on nothing uh, we are going to have a uh, a bank holiday by the summer not only in Europe but here in America it may only last five days to two weeks but it'll mean a massive devaluation of the US currency currency will probably be equivalent to one-third or one-fourth what its current value is they will try to cobble together some international uh, g20 and have a, a new currency based on the dollar and these other currencies, which will, of course, cause a massive contraction in credit, so massive starvation. But let, nations- me, let me just say something about that, because I think the, the problem that they're going to have, and this is the consistent problem of these guys forecasting, is they would do it too late. Right. The, whatever their plans are now, if you really wanted a bank holiday to do something good, it should be called right now, 
So you could put in Glass-Steagall, and you could break apart the too-big-to-fail banks right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. In other words, they so, do, it's, yeah. it's, it's like surgically amputating the toes before the leg has to come off. That's right. And so the problem that you've got on the timing on this thing is that, for example... Well, I think it's going to be too late. That's my, my feeling is that so far I don't see any motion on the congressman or even the candidates like Ron Paul to say how important it is to put in Glass-Steagall, and I'm really upset about it. Well, here's, here's the... But, there's, there's something good, some good news I can give your listeners, but it means they're going to have to do something. You know, a lot of the Democrats were saying, well, we're going to wait to see what Elizabeth Warren does because she was so good during the bailout period, and she was. She was one of the few people warning that the bailouts wouldn't work, she and uh, Neil Borofsky of TARP. But she'd been quiet so far on Glass-Steagall. So the people who were saying we don't need Glass-Steagall were saying, well, Elizabeth Warren hasn't called for it, so I'm not going to go with it. Well, now she's called for it. Not only that, but she said she's been speaking with Maria Cantwell. Now, you remember, Dr. Deagle, yeah. Maria Cantwell was one of the Democrats in the Senate who initiated the uh, Glass-Steagall legislation that Barney Frank, Geithner, and Obama killed. They instead went with Dodd-Frank, which was a gift to the banks, a gift to the speculators and the banksters. And so what Elizabeth Warren said yesterday in a very prominent press conference is that she's working with Cantwell to get it into the Senate now to then move that with Marcy Kaptur's uh, Glass-Steagall bill. Now, within 24 hours... A whole series of people like Jim Cramer of Mad Money came out and said, we need Glass-Steagall. People who previously had been quiet on the sidelines are now saying we need Glass-Steagall. So when, when Obama is privately saying to people, well, we have plan B to deal with this if there's a further meltdown, he's, he's, he's doing what you're saying. He's preparing the ground for destroying the dollar, losing our sovereignty, and putting us into some kind of... Uh, funny money scheme that will have no power for the U.S. government or the U.S. population at all. But that's why if we could get Glass-Steagall in the next weeks, we might be able to head off what otherwise will be the freight train derailing and smashing into uh, crowds of, of people. Yeah, well, I, my, my feeling is what I see so far being, you know, just cold, hard, steel nerves, I don't see action happening. So I expect a crash this summer. Secondly, I well, think actually, something may... Just one, fi one final point on I, that. I, the second thing I want to mention will be that I think may preempt that is Fukushima. Yeah. We have four different types of release of radiation that are occurring. We have the constant release from the now hydrothermal uh, reactions generating tritiated steam underground that are vented off to the ocean 80% and into the air, and is now making food even hundreds of miles away, very highly radioactive, and cesium and strontium and plutonium, etc. Those radiation levels are now being picked up off the coast of California in Orange County uh, by uh, University of California, Irvine. They've actually tested it. They've tested pine needles in Oregon and Washington State. Now they're going to test clams. What I have to say is that there's three other types of radiation release. The next one is it's a cooling pool literally on stilts at 100 feet up, of cooling pool four, which is hot radioactive material and seven years of fuel, if that goes on fire, it's called a pyrophoric fire, we're going to have most of it become airborne nanoparticles, creating a radiation cloud and a 40 million evacuation of Japan, which means the Japanese economy will completely collapse. Secondly, we'll have a massive disaster where that radiation cloud will spread around the world, salting the food, and you'll actually have to have citizens' committees, and I said this last night on rents, running around with stickers and the radiation detectors to put stickers as citizens on food, whether or not it goes click, 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 because if it's too radioactive, they'll put a sticker on it that says, don't buy this food. And you're going to start seeing citizens do this, where they'll have a not sign with radioactive, because if it doesn't show that it's non-radioactive, citizens are going to go out there and they're going to go to the grocery stores and say, they're, they're going to start blacklisting grocery stores that are not sourcing their food properly, which means greenhouses that grow food with filtered water that doesn't have radioisotopes will thrive, and any food grown outside uh, that's not protected will be radioactive. And people don't understand that, that this is going to destroy the health of the population, and as the health starts to deteriorate, we're going to get the emergence of super plagues, cancer, heart disease, birth defects, everything you can imagine, a holocaust of death on an order that no one has even imagined.
And I think well, it could happen I, I as early as the summer. I, I would agree that we're facing that kind of holocaust. I don't agree that it comes from Fukushima, per se. But I, I wanted to just go back well, to no, one no, thing. No, no, the Fukushima I'm, disaster is already doing it. It's bioaccumulating. Even but, if these other let me go back. Let, let me finish me this last thing, though. I've I got to say this because it's, it's going to tie in with this because I think it's going to happen soon. My best guess is that in the next two months, we're, we're from whatever source, either a what's called pyrophoric burnout or the pool falling into the ground table, which is now they've proven that most of the corium, and this is Michio Kaku's statement, is liquid. They've not built a corium catcher, so it's now probably 100 meters below the reactor site and building fissures going tens of kilometers away or out into the ocean or into the land. What's likely to happen is a hydrovolcanic explosion and or a real true nuclear explosion, and we don't have anybody prepared here in North America, including our Senator Wyden, to deal with the fact of a massive radiation cloud literally making it dangerous to go outside and even breathe the air. They don't have any plan at all from FEMA or the government, and Obama, all he wants to do is talk about the fact that he's a gay president. So well, I think, I think the, it's the, going to change everything, to be honest with you. I think it'll change everything, and I think it's going to happen by this summer. Well... I, again, I, I don't have uh, corroboration on that, but I do have corroboration on something you mentioned earlier. Scary on, this collaboration. Of, on this question of Glass-Steagall, uh, I did an interview with uh, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, a Republican from North Carolina who represents the Camp Lejeune area, and I would encourage people to go to the LaRouche Pack website and listen to this interview with Congressman Jones. It's actually, I'm sorry, on uh, yeah, it is on LaRouche Pack right now. He is the person who initiated the House uh, Concurrent Resolution 107, which would make it an impeachable offense if a president orders military action without going through the Congress. And Jones is working to try to get a group of Democrats to join him and Representative Dan Burton, who's a very well-thought-of Republican foreign policy official from the House. Uh, They've got six co-sponsors so far, He's connecting that to Glass-Steagall as well, that we're talking about now what's it going to take to defend the nation. We have to go back to a credit policy, and we have to go back to the Constitution when it comes to matters of war and peace. And the Constitution will only be activated if the American people are mobilized to defend it. And this is something that everyone can do. What Walter Jones said to me on the radio show is that if they start getting calls from their constituents on this, he said a congressman who gets 10 calls will dismiss it. If he gets 10 calls two days in a row, if he gets 10 calls and more calls coming in over the course of a week, he pays a lot of attention. And I think one of the things we've given up on in this country is because we saw what happened, you remember, with the health care bill. Yes. Where Congress ignored the population. We've got to get Congress so they cannot ignore the American people. Yeah. Well, the problem is right now, if they do ignore it, we're dealing with financial, uh, I call economic get in the summer. We're dealing with radiation, food Armageddon, radioactive food Armageddon, probably as early as this summer or fall. We're dealing with a situation where we're not dealing with the galactic and other effects on our planet. Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report. Harley, you got some important topics to cover, very important issues. Uh, let's proceed. Yeah, I want to just call people's attention to something that on the surface might seem uh, to make sense, but when you realize what's behind it, <clears throat> you realize this is another example of how the globalists are turning us into our own enemy. Uh, there's a policy that was adopted very quietly by Obama two weeks ago called the Humanitarian Intervention Policy. Under this doctrine called Right to Protect, they set up something called the Atrocities Prevention Board. Now, this grew out of the Libyan operation, where supposedly we were intervening to protect the the civilians from the government. And this, of course, was the same thing we're trying to do in Syria. Now, this whole idea is a classic example of a British imperial policy where the president is set up on a pedestal to know who's good and who's bad, what governments are good and what governments are bad, and the ones that he decides are bad, we're going to overthrow. Now, the person who is deployed to head up the Atrocities Prevention Board is a woman named Samantha Powers, who was, you may remember, 
demoted by Obama during the campaign when she called Hillary Clinton a, a bitch and a witch and a couple of other things. But then she became the number two person to Susan Rice at the United Nations. And Susan Rice and Samantha Powers are dominating our foreign policy while they send Hillary Clinton traipsing around the world. The, the, but the third person in this Susan Rice, Samantha Powers, is Powers' husband, a man named Cass Sunstein. Now oh, listen right. to this. Sunstein sent a memo to the president in 2009 saying one of the greatest threats to our republic is conspiracy theorists. Oh, don't want and those people said, out. People yeah, that ask questions, oh my gosh, if yeah. they have a bag of questions like oh, the wait, jokester. Wait, it's even worse. Yeah. Here's what he said about that. He said that we have to cause cognitive dissonance within conspiracy theorist <laughs> groups so they don't function. Now, here's the irony. He starts out by saying only people who are demented believe in conspiracies. And then he concocts a conspiracy to attack conspiracy theorists. Now, if that doesn't show you the hypocrisy of these guys, Cass Sunstein is someone who's a behavioral economist from the University of Chicago who thinks the way that you can control people is through manipulating their behavior and using economic rewards the way shock therapy is used to control people's emotions. Now, this is the guy who's one of the closest friends and mentors of Obama from the University of Chicago. Now, the other story that came out this week that could finish off Obama is something that goes far beyond fast and furious. And I, I think uh, Eric Holder is on the hot seat with a very limited tenure. But what they're also discovering is not only did we arm the Sinaloa cartel, or as I like to call it, Eric Holder's posse, <laughs> but at the same time, uh, we, allowed the, we allowed the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank to launder huge amounts of drug money. And it now appears that a significant amount of that drug money ended up in the campaign coffers of Barack Obama, courtesy no of George kidding. Soros. Isn't that and, wonderful? So now George, we have a drug lord, drug lord sponsored uh, puppet president. That is, uh, that is not doing anything more than things like Fast and Furious is one of the most criminal attorney generals in history, Eric Holder. And who also wants to arm <clears throat> al-Qaeda of Iraq in Syria. Oh, wonderful. So if people don't get the point that Obama has to go, yeah. then they're, maybe they're already on an asteroid in some other parallel universe. Yeah. Because we're seeing the fabric of this nation. The, the, you see, the idea that if somebody believes that bad policies come from a deliberate intent, you're considered paranoid. And what Sunstein is saying is the government has the right to protect those who don't suspect anything, in other words, those who are clueless, from those who might cause them to ask questions. Now, Ooh, what are we talking don't about? That's really a, murder... that was very well you put that. that... <laughs> well, this is the murder of Makes Socrates. <laughs> this, but this is the murder of Socrates. Because what was Socrates accused of? Undermining public order by challenging, by, by corrupting the youth. And how did he corrupt the youth? By getting them to seek truth. Oh, and so, according thing. to Sunstein, seeking truth is undermining public order. And therefore, the government must use its power to disrupt organizations that believe that there might be some method to the madness behind Obama. Oh boy. Now, that's the kind of dictatorship, uh, the totalitarian mindset that we're seeing in this administration. And if Obama, by some fluke, would get a second term, I don't think this republic would survive. No, it will so, be in America in 2016. We'll have the Hunger Games in 2022 if there's still a world left. Yeah, and that's, that's why it's so important now to see that people were shocked into waking up around the J.P. Morgan Chase thing and the saying, gee, maybe these guys who think they know everything don't really know everything. Maybe these masters of the universe like Jamie Dimon uh, screwed up. Maybe we're all sitting on thin ice 
with a, a worthless dollar in our bank accounts, uh, and the uh, banks might even might not even be there when we go to the ATM machine. You know, the joke in other words, I, to say, I, I got a new political term for you that you can reuse, and anybody listening, it's called scamtastic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so LaRouche used to say, you'll, one of these days you're going to go to a, an ATM and, and put in your uh, ATM card and the bank will bounce. Exactly, exactly, yeah. In other words, you'll bounce, actually. You'll bounce away from the ATM and the next fool trying to get their money out will bounce as well. Well, and that's where we are. And now we see the run on the banks in Greece. We see the danger that J.P. Morgan Chase has put the U.S. economy in. We see the absolute, complete corrupt fraud of Barney Frank, who's retiring. You know, I was actually making a joke that Barney's retiring because after Obama's finished with his first term, he'll go marry Barney Frank, and then they'll go off and be happy. And then it'll really be the Dud Frank duo. Oh, boy. <laughs> you're, hot there, but... you're, you're hot today. You're hot today. Well, but you I know, know. Hey, the thing is that we don't want to be uh, the, that ancient Greek prophetess, uh, as you mentioned, uh, her name Cassandra. is Cassandra. Cassandra that, yeah. that she was given the curse. This is the old story, of course. It's not real. That yeah. uh, she was always correct in her prophecies, but the curse was that no one would ever believe her until after it came true, even if it was devastating. And here's the problem. The people would like there to be Cassandras because they don't want to take personal responsibility. But the whole point, and we were talking about this off the air, what was the point of the Old Testament prophets? They knew that people would reject them. You know, the prophet is always never heard in his home country. But the prophets are the people who go against popular opinion, who tell the truth, and if they can convince people in time, maybe the people can act to save themselves. Where we're about to have, I would say, three things that are likely to happen in the next six months before the end of the year. We're likely to have a bank holiday. We're likely to have a, some kind of feeble or stupid strike against the Bashir reactor. We're likely to have a close to the hair trigger nuclear war start if we don't back down from what we're doing with Russia, which Russia says within two weeks this Aegis anti-missile system becomes activated. We're not talking about 2015 or 2018. We're talking about two weeks. No, we're, we're on the cusp right now. And, and, you know, if people want to do something about it, we're pulling together the forces that are backing the Jones resolution, that are backing the Glass-Steagall bill. And if you want to become part of that, you can call me and volunteer whatever you can do. If you can make calls or contribute money or, or go up and down your block, Get involved, and the number you can call is 800-922-2907. Obama is vulnerable. We need an army out there of, of boots on the ground to remove him. So it's 800-922-2907. It's a toll-free call for you, 800 922 Two nine zero seven, and tell people you heard it on Dr. Deagle's show, and we'll get back to you and, and work out a strategy. Well, you can hook up with people around the rest of the country who are moving now to throw Obama out. Exactly. I'll get a number again. 800-922-2907. Thing. That's the LaRouchePAC.com, and of course the international, uh, the international, which is LaRouchePUB.com. Very important to understand the issues and that don't just panic. Don't just think, oh, well, I can prep and get through this. No, we need to take action as a people. And we can't wait uh, for our so-called election to happen or selection. They should change it from an election to a selection because they just select the next fool to march us over the cliff. That's what they're doing. <laughs> okay, yeah, talk to you next week. Wonderful. And uh, back in a moment with House and Wells in our third hour, a special guest coming up. Don't miss it. We'll be back in just a moment.